So welcome. Got it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. Um, so how did this part on Three Pines come about for you? Well, uh, it came about by a virtue of me getting an audition through my agent and uh, auditioning, putting down a self-tape and then um, didn't hear anything for a while. And then uh, and then, uh, you know, kind of forgot about it, to be honest with you. And then uh, and then I was about to start a movie in the summer of 21 and I get a call literally the day I'm supposed to start and get a haircut. And it's my agent. And he's like, don't cut your hair. Don't cut your hair. Don't shave your beard. Three pines likes you. You're in the mix, but they especially like your look. So don't touch your, don't touch your hair. <laughs> and I was, I was like, I'm literally right about to get a haircut right now. So I'm glad you called when you did. Um, so I, I told the producers, look, I'm in the mix for this show. It's a pretty big show. So can we, can we like save my locks? And, uh, and they were like, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll work with you on that. So, so at that point I still hadn't gotten the part. Um, but, uh, but then they came, they came back and, um, I, I believe I did a read for the producers. I believe, did I know? I think at this point, no. So at that point I had already submitted the self tape and then they came back and said they were interested in me for another role. And, uh, so I, I, I was a little disappointed to be honest, cause I liked the role of Peter, which was who I was originally auditioning oh. for. So oh. I read for this other role, uh, on zoom for producers and directors and all that. And, uh, and then didn't hear anything for a little bit. Then they came back and said, okay, you're back in the mix for Peter. <laughs> so then I did, I did a chemistry read with Anna Tierney. And so far as you can gauge chemistry over zoom. Right. And, uh, and we had this read over Zoom. And then I, that was on a Thursday afternoon. Didn't hear anything rest of the day. Didn't hear anything Friday. Nothing over the weekend, which is usually to be expected. Nothing Monday. Nothing Tuesday until the afternoon. My agent calls me and says, may, may I speak to Mr. Peter Morrow, please? And I, I, I said, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure you can. He's right here. Uh, so, yeah, that's how, that's how it came about. Oh, that's great. Uh, what was the other role that they briefly wanted you for? Do you know? Yeah, you, so you're the first person I would be telling this to, because um, nobody's ever asked me that. Um, uh, in in terms of interviews, uh, it was it was the role of Mike. If you remember Mike and Angela, in episode I believe episode four, um, the episode where we see the bear. I think what was that the episode with the bear? I think it was. Sounds right. So Mike was the dad. Okay, so no, no, that was a great role though. That was uh, that was played by Joe Copton, who did an incredible job. Um, no, that was Mike and Angela. So they were part of the book club, and oh. Mike at some points at some point gets questioned uh, by Gamash as he's burning stuff in a bonfire. So it was a, it was a much smaller role. It was like more or less a a couple episodes. I think he appears in. Jeez, maybe it's not three and four. No, I think I think it is. There's three a lot and four of characters. Things. I get the confused. So. Yeah. <laughs> if you're anyway, not one of the so. major murder suspects or murderers or victims, then I don't. <laughs> yeah, he he was the, the, he was sort of a, a suspect for a minute. Anyway, he and his wife they they crashed the car when they were being chased by Lacoste. Oh, and okay. oh okay, yeah, yeah. That's the better way to explain it. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, no, it, it, Peter's definitely a much better role. <laughs> you get yeah, to. I, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, you were in almost all of it, like a lot, and then and and suspected yeah. almost every time. <laughs> and then, no, that's the thing. No, exactly, exactly. And then I, you had I, the whole two episodes with the family, so yeah, that was a much better, better. Role. That's right. That's right. No, it's a great character. I mean, Peter's Peter's a great character. I mean, he's a complex, uh, complex man. Um, but uh, no, I was I was very happy to uh, to get the offer. So uh, sure. Yeah. Did you ever shoot the movie? Did, as well no i did so we did shoot that movie um oh. it was it was just uh yeah it was uh it was it was it was a nice role i had a supporting role in that thing um they, they let me keep my hair long as it turns out three pines wanted me to take the beard down so oh. <laughs> I, did, I mean my beard at that point is probably something like it is now mm -hmm. but yeah they ended up asking me to take the beard down uh so that was fine Okay. Um, in fact, I, I will say this, they wanted, they, they suggested, they said, just take the beard off. And then I, uh, for fear of my, uh, wife referring to me or 
or saying I look, I look like a, like a, you know, 12 year old boy. I asked if I could keep a five o'clock shadow or a few days growth, you know? And so she's like, don't, don't shave it all the way. <laughs> so I said, to, I said to Sam Donovan, I said, can we keep a five o'clock shadow? He said, sure. Then I start reading the books because I was cast quite late in the process. And there's this one section in still life when Louise Penny refers to Peter as being always clean shaven. I thought, oh, I, said, I got a five o'clock shadow and I'm not always wearing glasses, which was another thing she pointed out. He's always oh. wearing glasses. But uh, but that's why it's a it's an adaptation, not necessarily right, a carbon right. copy. Trans I don't even remember having the five o'clock shadow, to be honest. I have to go back. And look at it. It's it's slight. It's slight. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's it's slight. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'm just I'm just too baby faced, and it makes. I mean, I'm already about ten or fifteen years younger than the characters are described in the books, so it would have made me look too young, I think, to uh, play Peter. Well, but. personally, I don't generally like beards. I mean, obviously, you're handsome enough; it doesn't matter either way. But as far as your looks, but uh, I just I don't I hate the whole um, trend that's been going on for. It started before COVID, and it's still going. It made COVID that's made true. it worse, and now it's that's still going true. on. Like get rid of the beards, because a lot of them are like these big, long, thick things. Like I want to see the handsome yeah. face. You know, yours is not you know that long, but <laughs> no. Well, I appreciate that, but you're right. No, it is a thing. It has been a thing, and uh, and then there's the mustache thing too. With this whole, uh, I was gonna say, uh, Movember. Movember, yeah, that's what yeah. they call it, right? When you get the mustache Must and no Yeah, mind. I don't mind the mustache so much as long as it's uh, normal looking. <laughs> so, yeah, but you don't like yeah. you don't like the the shaggy kind of scraggly yeah. beards, man. I still like beards in general. It just it hides the face, you know. And, it's a it's a very fair point. Um, yeah, it's a fair it's a fair I point. I think that's what a lot of actors like about it, men especially. You know, like they they don't want to be seen. <laughs> it's like that's what you're supposed to do. You're an actor, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. My my wife recently referred to beards as men's makeup. She says yeah. it's makeup for men. That they, yeah. That they, well, except they, women wear makeup to be seen. This is kind of the opposite. <laughs> but I think too, interesting. if you have, like you said, a baby face, or if you're like, maybe, I think some actors use it because they're afraid they're getting cast for their looks rather than talent. And so they think, you know, I'm, I don't want to look like that. I don't want to be the handsome guy, but. You know, that, that is. <laughs> That is an interesting point. I think there might be something to that, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, someone like me, I watch it because there's a handsome guy on it, so I don't want to watch a guy with a big beard. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You're I'll like, I'm not watching, watching this. this. I'm not watching this for your whiskers, dude. <laughs> yeah. I want to see your face. I want to see like, your jawline. Yeah, it's like I'm glad you can act, but I want to see the handsome face. <laughs> uh, I totally understand. Now that makes sense. Anyway, yeah, I don't want to go off too go. much of a tangent here, but I, I just watched no, it's too late for three, that. No. <laughs> three Pines uh, yeah. the last few days. I really enjoyed mm -hmm. it a lot. Uh, no, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I didn't like the ending, but hopefully mm -hmm. it get picked up for a second season because hopefully. Uh, I don't want that to be the ending. It was too that, would be, that would be some cruel and unusual punishment. Yes. To, uh, like what? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that wouldn't be cool at all. Yeah. So uh, when when exactly did the shooting take place? You say 2021 and how long? Yeah. So the principal photography started in August of 2021. Uh, we wrapped just before Christmas that yeah. year. So I started in September, probably about three weeks after everyone else. Well, not everyone else, but three weeks after they actually started rolling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I started in September and... Uh, and we shot everything in reverse. We shot, we shot, so seven, we shot two episodes at a time, kind of mixed up. They call that a block. Uh, so we shot seven and eight, hmm. five and six, three and four, and then one and two last. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We shot backwards. Yeah. Okay. So uh, did you know any of the cast or crew before you started shooting? I did actually. Uh, let's see, who did I know? I knew Sarah Booth because we had worked together yeah. a couple of times. So she played Agent Yvette Nicole. Uh, she was great. Uh, we worked together on a video game called Far Cry 5 in Toronto in 2017. That's when we first met. And then I actually, I was in Los Angeles for about half the year in 2019 and then got an offer on something. So I flew back up to Canada to shoot that thing and then booked something else, which was with Sarah Booth uh, right after that. And that would have been in the fall of 2019. And uh, she played my wife in that, in yeah. that show. 
yeah she's funny was, she's, she's she was really great. funny <laughs> really talented girl yeah yeah she's uh, great. did you also know uh lawrence who played your sister julia because you were on transplant yeah, good question you know i i did a brief thing on transplant and i saw her around but we, we didn't meet at that oh, point okay. yeah yeah she's okay. lovely she's just oh, lovely she's and, wonderful and she was such a different girl. character in this because i've actually interviewed her a yeah. few times Have you? and i almost didn't recognize her and, and i'm like who is that she looks kind of familiar and then i realized oh she's so different in this i didn't even recognize yeah, yeah. who one <laughs> oh yeah she she's great she's actually a pretty uh pretty big star here in, in quebec i'm in yeah, montreal at the that. moment actually oh, okay. yeah so she's uh, in the french canadian community especially but though mm -hmm. of course with transplant you know which is a pretty yeah. popular show uh in, in its own right uh she's she's gaining some notoriety from that uh, she's tremendous she's just a really lovely person and super talented actress yeah right right yeah i mean i i, I, yeah, I just read uh that she was in some other show that's very big over there that we never got before she did transplant so yeah 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 but she, yeah, she was awesome as Julia. It's a great when somebody comes in, they're like really good, and then they die. And I'm like, wow, it's it, you know, they make a mark so quickly, you know. <laughs> totally. No, I I hear you. Yeah, um, that's true. Yeah. So, um, your whole family shows up in the in the fifth episode. Uh, did you do? Did you guys do anything to bond before you started shooting to seem like a real family? Or I mean, it's kind of contentious family. I understand. <laughs> right. Good point. Um, well. Not really. <laughs> we um, we didn't have a lot of time to do anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that uh, Brett Donahue, who plays my brother, uh, Thomas, was cast quite late in the process. Um, so now people were cast for the most part, as far as I could tell, were cast and then we were sort of rolling. I mean, we did have some some stunt rehearsals for the uh the fight scene with my wow. brother and me uh you know so we we got to sort of bond in that sense you know we, <laughs> excuse me that wasn't the first time we we rolled around like in the grass you know um we uh we had a stunt rehearsal for that so we got to to you know bond a little bit i suppose before that um but yeah, sometimes that's the way it goes. You know, you don't necessarily have a lot of time to uh, to connect with with another actor that you have to portray this um, believable past uh, with on screen. I mean, yeah, well, I guess the it, way it is. Yeah, well, I guess it works out when they have really good actors. You, you guys can just instantly do that, have that connection. Um, yeah, that yeah. fight scene was interesting because it was yeah, it was kind of funny. <laughs> really funny, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two privileged guys rolling around the grass. It should be too old right. to be doing that. You know? Right. And I shouldn't be fighting. My character shouldn't be fighting because he's an artist, right? Um, I, yeah, I actually... Your hands, actually, your hands. Yeah, that was funny. That was... Oh, man. She's a... You know, uh, yeah, she actually threw that line out because oh. uh, I think they told her, like, say something to Peter that, you know, you would say and because mm -hmm. it seemed kind of empty that she wasn't saying anything. So she threw that line out. That, that's credit Anna Tierney for that, that worked, one. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I actually, in real life, I, I actually do know how to throw a punch and I do know how to fight because I've done some training, but they deliberately told me, uh, to look like I didn't know. Right. And I will, and I will say this too, about that scene. I actually, on the first master take, so the first wide shot that we did of it, they took the mats away on all the rehearsals we had, we were falling on mats on the ground. Oh, yeah. He, uh, he kind of pushes me over if I recall, uh, and I I pulled my oblique muscle, so my side muscle, and then I had to like get him off of me and do this twisting move, which was extremely painful to do, having basically mildly torn a muscle in the side in the side of my rib cage. Um, so that was actually a really painful <laughs> scene to shoot. So all that angst and um, you know the aftermath of the fight and the yelling back and forth was was uh, not a whole lot of acting going on there. Um, <laughs> Pain, yeah. yeah and then and then on the run down the stairs too earlier it was the fall it would have been october of 2021 and uh and it was very slippery i was wearing these dress shoes with like no grip on the bottom and i nearly kind of slipped and threw my knee out on the way down but anyway it it, it was uh it kind of suited the character though because he's not yeah. supposed to be necessarily super athletic you know he's an yeah. artist and he's he's a, he's a little awkward in that sense so all that stuff and uh yeah I, I actually was struggling to get up the hill after we run down. I think probably because we had already done the part where I hurt my uh, my side, oh. and so it was just, everything hurt 
trying to move or run every it's throwing a punch was very painful yeah. so um that's a little backstory for you I haven't told anyone <laughs> that yet either yeah that was uh yeah the whole thing was funny when it started inside and you guys were acting like a couple of little boys fighting and then give me that back and run chasing each other around the hotel that was that was great <laughs> yeah th thanks we had fun with it and we definitely had fun yeah you with could that. tell how yeah. um so um uh let's see so what else can you tell us about filming the the show any any funny stories or interesting things um i mean it was just it's just a great experience overall um working with alfred molina was a real treat um he's just a lovely man just a, mm -hmm. a great leader a great number one on a set um i'm trying to think funny stories i mean uh Normally, I would say, you know, I, I spent the majority of my early career or early career, I'd say the the bulk of my career until coming back to Canada, where I was from originally, I spent it in the Los Angeles area. So I I knew about, you know, the cold weather, because when, when you're working with a lot of Americans, let's say in Canada, they always trip out about the weather. You know, mm -hmm. um, I was familiar with the cold weather because I had, you know, lived here for roughly 17 years before I moved to Southern California. So I, I was familiar with the, with the weather situation here. And so many people in the set were locals or at least from the area or had lived in this area for a long time. So they weren't really thrown by the crazy weather either. Uh, so, you know, typically that would be, you know, what some funny stories would be about would, would be how Americans, um, particularly Americans from a warm climate like Southern California react to the cold weather in Quebec. Uh, but we didn't have that many people. I mean, Alfred was, but he was just very chill and kind of Zen about the whole thing with the weather. Plus we had tents with like these heat lamps in them when we were shooting Ooh. outside. Um, but I'm just trying to think like any particularly, uh, particularly funny stories. Sorry um, to be on the spot. <laughs> no, that's okay. It happens to me all the time. Trust me. I need to learn how to think better on my feet, I guess. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm sure something will come to me if you want. We can maybe rain check that question. I'll get back to you. That's fine. Uh, fine. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, what about um, um, I'm blanking on the name. Um, the actor who played Jean Guy. Uh, yeah. Did Did you interact much with him? Well, that's funny. You should ask that, actually. Um, let me just take a sip of water here. Mm. Rossif Sutherland. So, yes, yes, of course, his father's a pretty legendary yeah. actor in his own right. Uh, so the funny thing about Rossif is the most we connected, he and I, was at the premiere in November. Uh, yeah. He was like a different person. And I guess that was really him. He was just super uh laid back and, and uh, kind of chummy and friendly. But while we were shooting, I suppose he's he's somewhat of a character. Uh, I was gonna say character actor, like method actor. I think he is. He is. I was gonna say method actor. Exactly. Thank you. Um, but he's a great character actor, and he's just a great actor. Period. Um, but no, I think he's 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 much more method in the sense that he's really in his his zone and his space when when he's working. So in fact, when I first met Rossif, uh, he introduced himself to me in French. Evidently, assumed that I speak French, which. I do, uh, not necessarily fluently, certainly not like he does or can, because he grew up for a large part of his childhood in Paris, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I, I understand that uh, to be the case. Uh, so, yeah, no, he uh, he was very much in his zone with his character and, uh, and kind of kept to himself to a certain extent while we were filming, which I entirely respect if that's your, your process and the way you go about uh things on a set then I, I totally respect that because you know we all have to do whatever we need to do to stay focused and concentrated um to deliver you know a great a great product at the end of the day so but he he's he was tremendous he was great and i loved so his when you saw him in the premiere he was really nice and friendly <laughs> very different yeah that's funny um, yeah, yeah. Okay, real quick. So I, I thought of something for your okay. previous question. Okay, so and this is I don't think it's necessarily a funny story. I mean, other the stuff I already told you about my stupid little injuries is kind of <laughs> funny, I suppose, in a way. But um, sticking with that uh, location where we filmed and um, that was in Montreal, we filmed at a house called the, I believe it's called the A.W. McConnell house. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny, I noticed a lot of people online thought that it was the Shriners Hospital, which is not the case. It was not the Shriners Hospital 
which is nearby there, but it's not there. Okay. Um, well, I I was actually born just up the street from there. Literally, like you could walk there in less than ten minutes wow. at the Royal the Royal Victoria Hospital, Montreal, where I was born. Uh, so that's where our base camp was set up, which was kind of trippy uh, to to realize that you know here I am and. I mean, fair to say this is the biggest break of my career being on this show. Um, and funny how I came back to Montreal, you know, after being in Los Angeles for all this time. Then I come back here and end up booking this part. And then here I am in the parking lot of the hospital where I was born. So I didn't even realize this, but the A.W. McConnell house come to find out, I think on my last day of filming there, my mom told me that um, the... The guy who had it built, this guy, McConnell, was the grandfather or great-grandfather of a very good friend of my father's uh, who I had always sort of known of growing up. And he was like my dad's super rich friend. My dad had this one super rich friend, and that was this guy. Oh. And uh, turns out that was the the house that his grandfather had, had built. He was oh. this sort of newspaper tycoon guy. Uh, he did other things too. I think he might've been involved in paper mills as well, but he was kind of a, uh, uh, William Hurst of Canada. Is that hopefully the guy? Not. That's the guy. Yeah. Hopefully not no. uh, moral, like moral too much. <laughs> right. Right. No, but you know, Hurst, right. Hearst castle yeah. in California and yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but he, he was a real mogul kind of tycoon character, this guy. Anyway, then I found out that my grandfather actually worked in that uh, building in that house oh, wow. as a tour guide of some of some kind huh. um, back in the 60s. Huh. So it was it was funny to find that out after the fact, realizing that, you know, again, fair to say those are my two biggest episodes mm -hmm. um, of this of the uh, first season and uh, funny to find out all the sort of interesting family connections. But yeah, as far as actual stories on set and funny things, and I'm, I'm just not thinking of anything. I'm sure it's there were. It's I'm fine. sure there were some. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, you play uh, an artist in the series. Do you do any art in real life? I I have. I have. Um, I was, funnily enough, kind of raised around art. My mother uh, was a musician, is still a musician. Um, and she was a music teacher in England, where she's from. Uh, so I was raised to appreciate art she would take my brother and uh me to art galleries as a as a kid and you know teach us about the different you know different um artists you know great artists throughout history as well as you know great composers and things like that so that was really a part of my childhood um and i enjoyed doing art my whole life but i i never really uh felt like it was a particular gift of mine you know my mother is a tremendous painter um and both well let's see both my grandfathers were tremendous painters so my dad's father and my mom's dad were incredible painters uh and my dad's mom as well was a great painter so it's it's in my family history and it's in my my blood i suppose as it were right. uh but no the art that i've done i i i i, I don't think i would necessarily be too proud to to show it around <laughs> i don't uh, think it's as really i understand it art is not so much about whether it looks good and other people appreciate it but whether you enjoy doing it and pouring your heart and soul into it well so i i think that might sounds give it like a, a much <laughs> much healthier much healthier attitude towards it so i will consider that and i appreciate yeah. it yeah and you know you never know what's going to happen when you're older you know i used to draw yeah. when i was a kid just cartoons and and whatnot yeah. i like to draw but yeah. i was always oh, i'm too impatient because if it doesn't come out exactly right i bleh, forget it and um yeah. now that i'm older yeah. and I'm, I'm much older than i look uh <laughs> i'm taking drawing classes for fun and That's i'm finding so cool. it's not so much that i'm impatient as that i didn't know how to fix it or how to do it right in the first place and now that i'm learning it's like, oh, that's much easier. <laughs> so, I, you know, that's fun. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate you telling me that. That's really neat. Now, I'll also say that my wife is is a is an incredibly talented artist as well. Okay. So that's that's someone else. Of course, we're not blood related, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but no, she's a great artist too. So uh, it 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 is 
continues to be all around me. And of course, yeah, not the least yeah. is playing Peter Morrow. You know, he's he's a he's he's a great artist in his own right. Yeah, Having yeah. said that, his art in the show is a different type of art as he does yeah. in the books. If you notice that, oh really? Yeah, in the books, his his type of art is is very like detail oriented, specific. Um, don't quote me on this, but I think more kind of lifelike or just very fine detail oriented um style whereas uh, in the show his art is more kind of contemporary like psh, which probably for me in real life would be more my style i would just kind of psh, you know throw it out right, there and, right. well i did uh, have that one scene where he's drawing like angrily and there's like a drawing of that something. that's right and he can draw yeah he can draw. that's right yeah, that's so. right that's, that's, oh you never know that, you when you get Sorry, older and rich and famous and you, you're looking for something fun to do, you might decide to become a painter. You never know. What, well, I what, appreciate that. Thank you. You no, never know, you know what, what? where life will take you, seriously, because I, I didn't have sure. to be that a journalist sure. either. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's really cool. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that because I, I do enjoy art and uh, and um, yeah, I'm going to give that give that some thought. Thank you. Um. I was going to say, uh, you're talking about becoming a, a journalist. You know, Louise Penny, who wrote the books, was a, a journalist. Oh, no, more I didn't. Or less. Yeah. Oh. And then she uh, she started writing the books uh, when she was in her late 40s was oh. when my understanding anyway of the story uh, is that she was in her late 40s when she started uh, writing um, the the Gamache series, uh, wow. Three Pines books. So, Great. yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, things just... yeah happen in your life and you don't always end up doing what you set out to do <laughs> no that's right and sometimes the the, the great the, the greatest work that you may end up doing in your life comes through the back door you just you yeah. just don't see it coming you don't expect it and it just sort of falls in your lap and then there you are and uh yeah. and i think it's pretty neat when it happens like that yeah. yeah 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 it's good to have lots of different options and hobbies and ideas you never know <laughs> I, agree. I agree. Um. So, uh, what else are you working on, or do you have anything else coming out you can tell us about? Uh. Well, I I do have some stuff coming up that um I'll be working on. Of course, we're hoping you know get word on a second season, and that's beyond our control. You know, we felt right. like we left it all out there on the floor and did everything that we could to uh sure. to deliver uh you know something worth watching. And as it turns out, it appears that the the audience feedback in terms of the numbers anyway has been pretty positive thus far so we're encouraged and we're hopeful but at the same time as an actor you know you have to just keep your eye on the ball um so I, i'm not really at liberty to talk about some things just because wow. of ndas and stuff sure. like that unfortunately but um but i i do have something coming up that i'll, I'll i'm actually going to start working on um in about a just a little over a month's time um, so I'm sort of preparing for that. At, um, that's all I can say about that. Um, you say whether it's a movie or a TV series. It's it's a TV thing. Um, okay. Yeah, but uh, but we'll, we'll you know, it it it's kind of it, it's a it's it's a foray into kind of a new um, thing f for me uh, as far as uh, certain aspects. That's, I'm sorry, I can't say more okay, than that. But. And then I am uh, working on, oh, I'm sort of tinkering, tinkering around with a couple of scripts. I like writing and I've been yeah. writing a lot more since the, well, yeah, I guess, I guess a bit more since the pandemic started um, and I, I enjoy doing that. So who knows, maybe I'll have a, a pitch or two, you know, to, to offer in a, in a couple, well, I was going to say within a couple of years, but hopefully before then, um, and uh and i i do a lot of voiceovers and i love doing voiceovers uh so i have actually been doing a lot more voiceovers um for the most part for netflix since being back in montreal actually i i did one last year called vincenzo mm -hmm. uh, which is a netflix show uh korean show and i i was the voice the english or american voice of vincenzo in that uh in, in this in the dubbed version which i love doing i just find it mm -hmm. I, I get a real kick out of it um, and then I had another one called Narco Saints, which was also a pretty popular Netflix, uh, shorter, like that one. shorter series. Uh, I played one of the lead characters in that for, again, for the English version. Um, they didn't, they didn't buy me as a, as a Korean drug dealer, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was a bad joke. Um, 
but yeah, I love doing voiceovers and then video game things come up from time to time and I do, I do those. So yeah. Um, yeah. And then we're hoping to get word on season two, hopefully within, I don't know, within a little bit. Yeah. Fingers crossed. And, uh, and I think, uh, I think, I think we have a lot to work with. I mean, there are a lot of books already out and we covered four in this first season. So I think okay. in total, I think there are, I want to say 18 or 19 books because oh. Louise just had another book come out recently. It is was, Peter that was either her 18 or 19. Is Peter in all of them? Do you know? Uh, I, I know he's not in all of them, oh. um, but he's in a lot of them. He's in oh. a lot of them, but I know he's not in all of them. Um, and, and uh people should read the books to to find out um more about why that is but um oh. <laughs> but but yeah but yeah uh but he's uh he, he's definitely a, a prominent character throughout much of the series and uh and he's been it's been a, a real uh cool opportunity to get to play this character yeah. seems like uh with such a small village that eventually there's not gonna be anybody left because everyone will either be dead or in jail <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. It, you know, I thought I thought about that. That's true. That's uh, that's something that that's occurred to me. Uh, but our uh, our uh, showrunner um, Amelia DiGirolamo, who uh, who's our our head writer and primarily adapted the the stories to the screen, she's she's brilliant to say the least. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that uh, she and her team will figure something out to work right. on. Working on. <laughs> right. All right. Well, I really appreciate you talking to me. I enjoyed it. No, I enjoyed it too. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for having me anytime. Oh, yeah. And I will, I will keep my fingers crossed and hope that season two comes along. Thanks, Suzanne. And thanks for all your support. Appreciate all it. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. -bye.